Next, we're going to talk about mood stabilizers for patients with borderline personality disorder. And we'll talk a little bit about lamotrigine, which is particularly interesting. Some of the earlier randomized controlled trials of lamotrigine suggested they may have a role for affective instability as the primary outcome. This was a small study for borderline personality disorder of 15 patients in the Lamotrigy arm, 13 patients in the placebo arm, and the dose was around 100 milligrams a day. So certainly the trial has limitations, but it did show benefit for Lamotrigy for affective instability. And it was on that basis that uh, Crawford and colleagues in the UK undertook probably the best pharmacologic study in patients with borderline personality disorder. And this was a randomized controlled trial of the Motrogene versus placebo that followed these patients for 12 months. The sample was made up of 276 patients, although they did lose a number of patients during the 12-month follow-up. They compared lamotrigine versus placebo, but all the patients were receiving care sort of in a mental health specialty clinic. The primary outcome was borderline symptoms, but they had a breadth of secondary outcomes, including depression, self-harm, substance use, social functioning, and quality of life, including a cost-effectiveness analysis. Now, this study is important because it demonstrated that there was no differences between lamotrigine and placebo on the borderline outcomes or any of the secondary outcomes. There was no advantage to lamotrigine in terms of quality of life or costing. And so the authors concluded that you could not recommend lamotrigine for borderline patients based on this carefully conceived study. Well, just a couple of comments on the Crawford study that I think are important takeaways. The challenge of the study is that they used a rather limited measure of affective instability. And so I think you can question whether it's a valid outcome measure. Were they really capturing affective instability with the measure they used? More importantly, all of these patients were considered to have complex personality disorders. And I would take that to mean rather severe borderline personality disorder. So it's not clear that it would generalize to less severe borderline patients, which seem to be the patients in the earlier research studies. I have used lamotrigine at times in mild to moderate borderline patients. For example, the patients I might see in primary care consultation or collaborative care, it can be helpful for the affective instability. And often they've done quite well with doses in the range of 200 milligrams a day. Lithium, there is only one small study in borderline patients, so lithium has a very limited role in borderline personality disorder. And of course, it is highly toxic in overdoses, so I think it's not a recommended mood stabilizer in borderline patients. So the key points around mood stabilizers is that the uh, Crawford trial certainly makes me more cautious about using mood stabilizers in borderline patients because of the lack of findings from the BEST trial. Lamotrigine can be helpful for the affective instability. In mild to moderate borderline patients, 